Ice Armor. Not only does the Elder Scrolls universe contain warriors who employ the use of glass armor and weapons which we discussed in a previous video, but in the trend of using seemingly nonsensical materials for protection, ice is another strange substance that a certain few use to create frozen weapons and icy suits of armor. Typically one would think that such armor would melt, and I can hardly imagine a sword of ice would be very helpful when fighting the Red Guard warriors in the Alakir Desert or the Ashlanders in Vardenfell. One's first thought would be that the weapon would simply melt in its sheath. Well, at least it could double as a nice cool drink in the Dire Desert scenario. In addition, ice doesn't seem to be particularly hard. It seems rather easy to hack away at frozen water with an ice pick. You'd only have to watch an ice cube be smashed by a hammer to sap away all the confidence you had in an ice helmet to protect your head. So how oh how does the Elder Scrolls universe explain this curiosity? What is up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Scott from Fudge Muppet and today I am here to investigate the peculiar usage of ice armor, but not just any ice, a particular kind of ice called Stalrim. The material is renowned for its strength and also for its unique ability to never melt as well as strengthen the frost enchantments that are placed on the substance. This peculiar enchanted ice, Stalrim as it is referred to, is seemingly exclusive to the island of Solstheim, ancient home of the Skarl and more recently home of the Dunmerhausers, Redoran and Telvanni. But it seems that it was not always so exclusive to the Skarl of Solstheim. It is a craft thought to be a very ancient practice brought from the ancient Nordic homeland of Atmora, far to the north, with the very first migrations of Proto-Nords. Two key passages from two different books give insight into the earliest use of Stalrim which we will now talk about. You may be aware of the unique Stalrim armor Deathbrand, which you can acquire yourself on the island of Solstheim in the Dragonborn DLC. Well, this armor belonged to an ancient pirate called Hackney Deathbrand, and in the book titled Deathbrand, which is a translation of a story from the Hackney saga completed by Artes Draelin, a Redoran scribe, it describes the magical ice's use as armor. The King of Ghosts, they called him, as eternal and pitiless as the sea he sailed. To Garruk, who had seen him charge into battle, clad in armor of gleaming Stalrim like the kings of old, his twin swords scything men like grass, Hackney was practically a god. So the reference to kings of old, as it is an ancient Nordic saga, is likely of reference to ancient Nordic kings, and it is said that they wore armor of gleaming Stalrim. So the use of this magical ice as armor dates back thousands of years, which is quite the curiosity considering that the art of smithing with Stalrim is now exclusively known by the Skarl, even though in ancient times it seemed to be a craft known by many ancient Nords, enough that the kings of the time would wear armor made from it. The other book which references a very early use of Stalrim, indicating that the craft was once known by many original Nords, is Fall of the Snow Prince by Lockheim. This book details the earliest of battles between the Atmorans, or what you would call ancient Nords, and the Snow Elves, or Falma, way back in the Morethic era. It details the final battle and last stand of the Snow Prince, leader of the Snow Elves, on the island of Solstheim. It describes how they showed great respect to the fallen Snow Prince and gave him a proper burial. And so we have brought the body of the Snow Prince wrapped in fine silks to a freshly dug barrow. The gleaming armor and spear were presented on a pedestal of honor and the tomb was arrayed with treasures worthy of royalty. All of the mighty chieftains agreed with this course, that the elf should be honored. His body would be preserved in the barrow for as long as the earth chose, but would not be offered the protection of our Stalrim, which was reserved for Nord dead alone. Now this is interesting as it highlights the specific practice of Nord burial with the magical protection of Stalrim. When adventuring on Solstheim yourself, we can see many sarcophaguses with ancient Nord corpses encased in this magical never melting ice. And this was presumably done to offer protection from the likes of grave robbers and necromancers who would seek to defile the fallen's bodies. So we have two separate recorded uses of Stalrim from ancient times for both protection in burial and for the creation of grand armor for the Nordic kings of old, which I guess is protection in life. 
But it seems that the use of Stalarim has now faded from Nordic tradition and the craft lives on only amongst the Skull of Solstheim. However, there have been a few examples of the craft being present outside the Skull tribe, such as the inhabitants of Thirst Call and some local Nords in the Third Era, but these examples seem to be somewhat temporary as by the 201st year of the Fourth Era, Stalarim seems to be a craft exclusive to the Skull tribe once again. In the book Crafting Motifs 46, Stalarim Rim Frostcaster by an imperial ethnographer named Dr. Alphidia Lupus, she writes brief notes on the skull. She mentions their unique use of an unfamiliar translucent blue material called Stalrim that she has never seen before. The most curious aspect of this Frostcaster clothing was its extensive use of an unfamiliar translucent blue-white material labelled Stalrim, a sort of crystalline metal unlike anything I've ever seen. It was so strange that, after checking to make sure no one was paying any attention to what I was doing, I laid hands upon it, rubbing and tapping. It was frigid faceted yet smooth and gave off a distinct chill, despite the heat from the embassy's roaring log fires. I was fascinated and went so far as to try and scratch this style room with a nail file from my clutch, to no effect whatsoever. And this gave me pause, for could a culture described as being barbaric have produced an armor material that even steel couldn't scratch? We know that Dr. Alphidia Lupus was alive and writing these books sometime in the Second Era, and even at that point, Stalarim was unique to the Skull of Solstheim, indicating that the craft of Stalarim smithing has been unique to Solstheim for quite some time. Some sources claim that the use of Stalarim in burials was used during the Great Wars with the Chimera in Morrowind during the First Era, but other sources claim such burials went out of fashion well before the First Era, ending in the Morethic Era. All we can know for sure is that Stalarim and its use in burials and in the creation of armor and weaponry is really, really old and came from the ancient land of Atmora. However, today the craft only lives on as the knowledge of the skull. In fact, the skull consider the enchanted ice to be holy and once shunned its usage, but this trend obviously fell out of favor since now the skull consider the forging of Stalarim armor and weapons to be a sacred art, an ancient tradition that they must keep and protect. In the 201st year of the Fourth Era, the Thalmor showed an interest in acquiring the secrets of Stalarim smithing so they could use it to fit out their armies. They had captured the skull blacksmith for interrogation, but the last dragonborn intervened and rescued the blacksmith. In a similar time, the blacksmith of Ravenrock named Glover Mallory created an improved bone mold recipe that incorporated chips of ground style room to give greater strength to the traditional bone mold armor, but whether he possesses the knowledge to work style room properly is unknown. Okay, so we get it. Stalrim forging and crafting is an ancient tradition that was once used by many of the Nords from Atmora, but now only the Skull have preserved the tradition. But we still don't know what exactly Stalrim is. How exactly is the ice created? What makes it a unique substance described as hard as iron and impossible to break by conventional means compared to standard ice? Well, unfortunately, you are flat out of luck if you are expecting a clear answer, because it seems like a secret lost to time. It seems that even the Skull rely on mining of pre-existing Stalrim deposits that are aplenty in the Nordic burial grounds of Solstheim, probably a large part of the reason why they keep the craft under wraps, so that it doesn't become widespread and everyone starts mining all of the Stalrim, depleting the only sources left. The most intelligent guess we can make is that it is simply magical ice, indicated by the name Enchanted Ice, implying that some kind of magic or enchantment goes into the formation of this ice, but it would seem that this magic is long lost to time, or I imagine otherwise Skyrim would be a near limitless source of Stalrim if all that was required was the magical know-how plus some ice. Another curiosity is the fact that the ice seems only to be able to be mined by an ancient Nordic pickaxe, a pickaxe of superior craftsmanship from a long gone age. Your typical pickaxe just won't do, so it is likely that the contemporary people of Tamriel don't even know how to make the tools to mine Stalrim, let alone create more of the magical ice themselves. Unfortunately, it is likely now that this enigma will remain so for the rest of time. 
So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Starlrim, the mysterious enchanted ice that will remain so, but I hope you are glad that you now have learnt about the origins of this mysterious material and its use as armour for ancient kings and sacred burials for the Nords who fell in ancient battles. It really is a cool concept, and I love when fantasy worlds use magic to make rather mundane materials into awesome stuff like a greatsword made of pure ice. Thanks so much for watching guys, we really appreciate all the support, like the video if you enjoy these little topics about the various interesting materials in Elder Scrolls. My name is Scott from Fudge Muppet and I'll be back to nerd out with you again in the next one.